Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Warband here, and welcome back to another battle in Napoleon Total War. The Napoleonic Wars had embroiled almost every country in Europe in a bloody and prolonged conflict, but a sleeping giant was looming in the east. Their entrance into the war could mean a victory for either side, and Napoleon, stretched as he was with his campaigns in Prussia, Italy, and Spain, looked to the Ottoman Empire as a means of turning the war back into his favor. The Prussians were at their breaking point and knew that the Ottoman Empire would be enough to rout the Spanish resistance and secure Napoleon's southern front, leaving tens of thousands of French troops free to move to Prussia's border. With reports of an Ottoman army landing in Spain in early August, the Prussians united with Spanish troops to stop the Ottoman juggernaut in its tracks. The first army on the battlefield today is, of course, the French, commanded by the Medier of Fayum. And the Medier of Fayum is the one who sent in this battle replay, so thank you very much, I do appreciate it. And the Mediers actually sent in quite a few good Napoleon replays, so I'll look to filter them in on the channel within the next couple of weeks. But let's go ahead and take a look at what he has brought to the battlefield here, starting in the front lines with four units of the Chasse. For his mainline infantry, he has five units of Fusiliers of the Line. He's got a basic general staff unit here as his general. And then he has four units of cavalry. He has a unit of Dragoons, a unit of Kuriase, a unit of the Polish Guard Lancers, and a unit of Carabinier. And I believe that the Carabinier is the Pistolier Cavalry. And he also has some infantry units on the wings here. We've already accounted for the Fusiliers of the Line and the Chasse. But he has two units of the Young Guard. He has one here and one on his very far left flank. And we've also got an 18th Regiment, the Brave unit here. And finally, for his artillery, he's brought a six-pounder horse artillery. And that rounds out the French forces, so let's go ahead and take a look at his ally. The next army on the battlefield today is the Ottoman Empire, commanded by Play to Live, Don't Live to Play. A very philosophical name there, but he is playing as the Ottomans and he has a lot of melee infantry here in the front lines. He actually has seven units of the Nazim Credit infantry here. He has six here, and then he's got one way over here on this flank. He's also got three units of the Bayek Janissary Musketeers. I love the uniforms on these guys. Very, very cool. He has one unit of Azars, which I believe is a light infantry unit. And then he has three units of the Samat Janissary. So these guys are melee units. You can see that they have swords instead of guns. So he's got one here, and then he's got two here in the front lines. We've got a basic general's bodyguard here on the battlefield. And then he's got a good amount of cav as well. He has a Silitar guard here. And then he has three units of the mounted Nazim Credit Infantry. So that's three units of cavalry. And finally, he has an 18-pounder foot artillery that's right on the edge here, ready to push up and take that hilltop. And that rounds out the two allied armies of France and the Ottoman Empire. So let's go ahead and take a look at who they'll be facing off against. Opposing the French Ottoman alliance, we have the Spanish, commanded by S. Freeman 81. And the cool thing about the Spanish roster is that some of their units actually get vanguard deployment. So while the rest of his forces have to deploy way down that mountaintop, you can see them in the distance there, he was able to deploy four units up on top of this mountain and effectively captured it before the battle even began. So hopefully he will be able to hold on to it uh, while he awaits the rest of his army and, of course, the reinforcements of his ally. But on the top of the mountain here, we have a unit of the Voluntarios de la Coruna. We have a unit of the Cazadores de Cataluna. Way down the slopes here, we have a unit of Tiradores de Cantabria, I hope is how you pronounce it. And I think this unit will be here to deploy stakes because there is a very small passageway here up around the back of the Spanish forces that have deployed up there. So uh, the infantry would take a long time to get up here, so it is an easier time for the Spanish to react to that. But if cavalry poured up here, that would be a bit of a disaster. So putting some stakes here would definitely be a good shout. Uh, we'll see if he does that uh, later on in the battle. 
but he also has a unit here of uh, horses, but there's no riders on them because he's actually dismounted it and brought them over here. It's the Casadore Voluntarios de Madrid. So a small 80-man unit here, but it's just so he can at least have two units facing forwards, and then he's got two units uh, guarding the backs. Let's rush over here and see where the rest of his army is positioned. It's, it's definitely positioned in a way... Uh, to rush that hilltop. So I think he has five units of the Hazares. So he's got one here, two, three, four, five. And then he has a six unit of cavalry, the Coraceros Espanol. So six units of cavalry. He's got a six pounder horse artillery here. And then for his infantry, he has two light infantry, two Walloon guards, and two units of fusiliers. And for his general here, we have Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta, I think is how you pronounce it. And that rounds out the Spanish forces, so let's go ahead and take a look at his ally. The final army on the battlefield is Prussia, commanded by Gun Squad. And in the front lines here, we have three units of Landvern. We've got one unit down here and two up on the hilltop. For his mainline infantry, he has six units of musketeers. We have one here, one here, and then four over here on this flank, ready to push that hilltop. For the rest of his infantry, he has three units of the foot guards, the best infantry that Prussia can bring. And then he has two units of the Prussian fusiliers over here next to the hilltop as well. He has three units of hussars, two here, and then one by his general. For the general, it's just a basic general staff unit, so nothing special there. And then right at the front here, we've also got a 12-pounder foot artillery. And that rounds out the Prussian forces, and in fact, that rounds out all the army comps. So let's go ahead and get to the battle. All right, guys, welcome to the battlefield. And as you can see, we have the Ottoman mounted rifles quickly ascending the hilltop here hoping to gain a foothold but unfortunately as they crested this mountaintop here they realize that the Spanish are already there those units being able to vanguard deploy almost up to the deployment line of the Ottomans so I, I'm sure a bit disheartened the Ottoman player has to recall his mounted rifles and send up his Nazim credit infantry now the credit infantry should be able to punch through here relatively well, relatively easily, I should say. Uh, they do have the numbers on their side. However, you can see that they're already starting to take some casualties as they move into position because the Spanish are already entrenched. But the Ottomans are very numerous and the Spanish reinforcements are a nowhere near. You can see that they're still a well ways off on the other side of the hilltop, but they are coming quickly. Now over here though, it looks like the Medier Fayum is going to utilize this little opening here to move his French troops up the mountaintop and maybe be able to cut off the Spanish before reinforcements do arrive. Now we do have those stakes here, as I mentioned in the army comps, the Teodores were able to put those stakes down to prevent any cavalry from getting up here, but it looks like the Medier Fayum has found a way to get it up here anyways, just using a very thin formation, he should be able to move them right on through. But I hear some cheering going on, and it looks like we have a unit of Hazares de Val Valpinas. This is a unit I neglected to see during the army comps, so they must have been hidden in the tree line here. But we do have the Nazim Credit Infantry here. They should be able to form square. Hopefully the Ottoman player does realize this, and he does. He is going to form square. Well, the Samet Janissaries over here, they probably don't have access to square, and it looks like the Hazares are going to get a really solid downhill charge into the Janissaries. Ooh, they probably did a good amount of damage there, too. What, what are they down to? 135. Yes, yeah, so about 25 killed in that charge. But now the Hazares have been broken from the, the battlefield. A bit of disarray over here as the Ottoman player works to get his units into position. And we've got more Nazim credit light infantry moving forwards to take on the very thin ranks of Spanish here. But look at what's going on down here. We have a huge downward charge from more Hazares from the Spanish into the French lines. We do have a unit of Polish guard lancers from the French actually enveloping the Hazares, but it looks like a lot of the French units weren't able to form square in time. 
And we've got some Prussian cavalry coming down here as well. So everybody is kicking off here with a cavalry charge. I can't really see what is going on in this uh, tree line here. But it looks like, again, it doesn't. Uh, the French were not able to form square with all their units. It looks like the Chasse are, are rapidly dropping. Thankfully, this unit of Fusiliers of the Line was able to form square just in time. Let's go ahead and give you guys a view of the mini-map so you can see where things are situated at this point. And yeah, we did have another charge from the Hazares over here, but they broke. And we've actually got the Young Guard up here uh, helping the Ottomans to conquer this area of the hill. The uh, Cazadores Voluntario de Madrid, so the cavalry unit that was dismounted, has already broken from the battlefield. But we've got more Hazares coming over this way. We've got more Hazares coming over this way as well. Good rear charge into the backs of that Polish-French cavalry, the Polish Guard Lancers of France. Yes, the Spanish player extremely aggressive here with his cavalry charges, but I think at this point the French have enough units in square formation that he shouldn't be throwing away all of his uh, Spanish cavalry just yet. Uh, we've got another unit over here just mixing in with the Ottomans. Some of them, I hope, are not routing. No, they're just being pulled back. This unit did manage to form square formation just in time, which is fantastic. I love the standard bear there, just making sure that everybody holds firm and does not waver. There we go. See, a lot of the a lot of the Spanish cavalry has already been destroyed very early on in the uh, battle here. We've also got the Samat Janissaries just cleaning up the remnants of the Spanish here. Uh, they're also being shot in the flank, and there they go. They have broken from the battlefield. We've got even more Hazares engaged against the Senat Janissaries. I would have maybe kept a few in reserve for later. Uh, cavalry can become very good uh, later on in the battlefield. Or, sorry, in the battle, or on the battlefield, I should say. So you don't really want to expend all your cavalry this early on. But look at this. We've got the Mounted Nazim Credit Infantry getting huge charges on the backs of the remaining Spanish forces on the hilltop. And just like that, they have been able to conquer, I'd say, close to half. Although the... Oh, yeah, the French are losing a bit of their uh, horsemen on those uh, stakes. But looks like, uh, yeah, he's got his uh, Carabinier up here and also the Dragoon unit. And I'm seeing a lot of Prussian infantry. We've got two units of Landwehr and a Prussian Fusilier over here. I don't think the Prussian Fusilier is able to form square in its uh, in its formation, its current formation. Yeah, due to the fact that it was uh, it was uh, in loose formation. Oh, the Landwehr also cannot form square too, so if he can get a good charge off, that will fracture both of those militia units very quickly. Oh man, if you were a, a Prussian militia man right now, you would not want to be on this area of the battlefield as the very heavy French cavalry just charges on three. You can see the morale is really starting to drop for that land there. And what are they pushing on through to? They're actually trying to go for the Prussian 12-pounder foot artillery. Oh, really risky trying to pull those dragoons forwards. We've got the foot guards, or sorry, uh, three units of musketeers actually up here to defend the artillery. But it looks like they are still being assaulted by the, by the uh, dragoons. Look at this guy over here too. There we go. Well done, boys. Well done. They are starting to fire at the dragoons, but... Oh man, he's just going to get that artillery crew out of there just in time. Very, very aggressive push and very impressive with all of that cavalry bearing down upon him and such an uphill fight that he is able to conquer this area of the battlefield. Uh, we've got most of the Prussian units in square formation right now. I, I don't think that's entirely necessary as we've also got some Fusiliers of the line moving on through too. I think just the one unit where the cavalry was engaged uh, would be enough in square formation. But the Spanish have withdrawn here. They've uh, created a new uh, V for victory symbol over here with the uh, Spanish artillery being the forefront of that defense. So they'll be firing straight down through this alleyway. It looks like the Ottomans are being a little bit passive. I would be really pushing forwards over here 
with my cavalry, the Nazim uh, credit infant, uh, sorry, the Nazim credit cavalry would be very good in this position, just running amok behind enemy lines. But it looks like uh, the Medier Fam realizes that the Ottomans are being a bit more passive, holding back. Uh, so he's going to hold back as well. So uh, good teamwork there, making sure that not one is attacking while the other is defending. And it looks like we've got some of the Prussians uh, pulling forwards here. I don't know if that was really necessary. They actually had a pretty solid position where they were before. Yeah, where they had a bit more of a commanding view of the battlefield. See, here is good, but where they're deployed, they the French are completely hidden behind the hilltops. So any any volleys that they do fire off are all going to miss their mark. Uh, looks like we do have uh, musketeers moving forwards over here. The French are almost doing a bit of a tactical retreat here, which is really unfortunate because he's, he's fought very hard for all of this territory on the hilltop or the mountaintop, and now it looks like he's almost giving it up which is very interesting. Now, the Ottomans do have quite a bit of infantry here on the ground. It looks like he is moving some forwards uh, to possibly challenge the, the uh, Prussians that are on the valley floor as well. But there's basically nothing going on on this area of the battlefield. So I'll just be ignoring that for now. But just don't worry. There's, there's nothing that has uh, been going on that we'll be missing. It's purely just bloodshed on this mountaintop here. But things have actually gone a little bit quiet now, so I'm not sure if they're just taking stock of their losses and figuring out what to do next, but it definitely is a bit of a stalemate. Alright, it looks like we do finally have the Ottoman Light Infantry moving forwards here, and I think that they're just trying to soften up this very tough defense here of the Spanish. We've got some Fusiliers, uh, two units of them. We've also got some Prussian Musketeers held in reserve. Now, I don't think the Spanish player realizes this, though, but the Spanish artillery is in range of that Ottoman Light Infantry. So, yes, they are firing into the tree line, which is fantastic, but the, the much cheaper unit of Ottoman Light Infantry is just picking up hard at the Spanish artillery crew. And once that is gone, then they'll be able to push forward through this choke point without just being shredded by the Spanish canister shot. Everything else is still quite quiet over here. We've got the Ottomans moving into position ever so slowly. They've got the uh, Bayek Janissary Musketeers over here on the valley floor. And again, the uh, Spanish, or sorry, the French are just kind of sitting back. Uh, he has brought up his six pounder horse artillery here. So he probably will look to set that up and maybe get a solid canister shot straight through the Prussian lines. But as I said, look at this, the six pounder horse artillery down to 11 men in their unit. And yeah, don't want to bunch up too much though with the light infantry because that canister shot will rip through multiple units with relative ease. We've even got the Fusiliers that are firing as well. I think the light infantry need to move back a little bit further because I think the light infantry actually have better range than the Fusiliers. But the Musketeers are finally withdrawing here, so it looks like they are going to give this area to the French. But that could possibly be a trap. He's going to have to be careful with that, because if the French actually move up over here, the Prussians will be able to flank around through this uh, very small opening. So I, uh, the Medier FAM, he is a very experienced Napoleon Total War player, so I'm sure he knows that. So again, very solid teamwork here, waiting for the Ottoman player to secure that choke point before he moves forwards. But yes, it looks like we do actually have the uh, Prussian artillery set up here. I don't know if they're gonna get a good position there to fire off. And it looks like, it looks actually like the uh, Prussian artillery is returning with canister shot. Yeah, so we're gonna have to watch that. Hopefully he doesn't lose his artillery to crew too quickly. I think from where the Prussian artillery is set up, uh, he is missing, the canister shot is going overhead, but from where the French artillery is, is sitting, it's not in a good position either, because it looks like either it's bouncing off the sides of the rock on the mountain there, or it's uh, hitting the dirt right in front. Let's see, another volley there. Yeah, so you, you can see that it's, it's just clipping the sides of the hilltop here. 
which is unfortunate. Now we do have some chasse over here. Are they in range to go after the artillery crew? It looks like they are. They're actually down to nine out of 24 men in that artillery crew. And how is the Spanish artillery crew? They are pretty much wiped out, down to six men. So they only have control or enough men to control two of the four cannons. And over here, the Prussian, yeah, the Prussian artillery crew is uh, down to six and they are still controlling two artillery pieces, but now that they're down to four, I bet you that will go down to one and they have broken. So the, the Prussian artillery is gone at this point, thanks to the Chasse. And I suspect that the Spanish artillery will follow very soon. Now that the Prussian artillery has been eliminated, the French Chasse are able to move a little bit closer and they've begun to soften up the musketeer lines of the Prussians. But we also have two units of Walloon Guard. This is the best unit that the Spanish have to offer. Actually moving down the slopes a little bit here, so I think they are going to try and get a bit of a flanking maneuver on the Spanish forces. Again though, the only downside is, is that if they are firing uphill, a lot of their shots won't be hitting their mark. So he's going to have to account for that. And apologies, I did say two units of Walloon Guard, that is incorrect. One unit of Walloon Guard and one unit of Light Infantry. Very smart job here from the Prussians as well with those Jaegers. This is a perfect position for the uh, Light Infantry. And you can see the Medje of Fayum realizes that immediately. And he is recalling his Fusiliers of the Line from that position. That is a very good call because that unit could have easily been shredded by that unit of Jaegers. We're, we're seeing the movement of a Chasse unit, a very depleted Chasse unit. They're going to move up and possibly uh, have words, or I should say have gunfire with the Jaegers. Uh, the Ottomans, again, being a little bit too passive over here, though. I don't like how passive he's being. Uh, he is only going to be facing off against uh, two units of Lanvair and a Musketeer unit. Uh, he has more than enough over here. He's also got uh, two units of Cavalry, one of them being the Silitar, uh, Silitar Guard. So that unit would be able to easily break the two units of Lanvair, and then the Prussian Musketeers can be wrapped up by the three units of the Baig Janissaries. But right now, it looks like the French are kind of taking the brunt of this assault. Uh, we do have two units of, well, Young Guard and Fusiliers of the Line moving forwards onto this flank. And again, the Prussians being forced to give ground just due to the superior position of the Chasse. They are trying to return fire, but at this point they've taken so many casualties that it might be a bit too late. And there we go. What, what do we have coming up here? Yeah, this is a very strong French front line forming here. Even if the Chasse are de uh, destroyed, we've got Fusiliers of the Line. We've got the Young Guard here. Very, very tough nut to crack. Uh, we've got uh, some light infantry that have moved forward. So finally, Spain is uh, lending a hand here, pushing very hard on the French lines. But the Ottomans, look at all of this. They could charge through and break through. Uh, on this uh, Spanish front. We've got two units of Fusiliers here. The artillery is almost dead at this point. Uh, does he have any more Janissaries? Janissaries. He must. No, maybe they're all expended. Okay, I can see why he might be a bit uh, more cautious then. No, no, he's got them over here. He's got some Janissaries here, 160. A depleted unit there. But yeah, he definitely has one, so he could punch through. But at this point, the French are just being outgunned because the uh, the Ottomans are sitting back too much. The French are definitely going to need some help here. And with this, see, this is a bad position for the French because, again, he's set up over here. Uh, the Prussian player, he's set up perfectly to hit the flank. The Fusiliers of the line getting hit very hard. The Chasse are already wavering uh, or routing from the battlefield. He's being pounded by the light infantry mixed in with the Walloon guards. And we do have both of them over here now. We've got a Prussian musketeer unit. So yeah, this is not looking good, but okay, okay. We've got some mounted Nazim credit infantry charging on in. And it looks like the uh, Prussian Musketeers uh, did not form square in time. Well, the, the one behind did, but this one did not. I think that this is all just a diversion, though, because that very healthy unit of Sama Janissaries is now moving into melee, and this is where they are going to shine by cutting up the Prussian resistance here. 
So well done there to the Oddman player, actually using his cavalry as a bit of a screening force, allowing his uh, Sana Janissaries to get into melee without too many casualties. He's gonna have to be careful not to be shot in the back though by the Walloon guards or the uh, Spanish player. And yeah, the Spanish have already realized this. The French have renewed their advance. We've got the Chasse moving up ever so slightly. The light infantry are not looking too good at this point, so they may actually break. Another unit of Prussian Musketeers has been withdrawn. And look how defenseless this is here. This is the time, Ottomans. This is the time to move on through. I would not focus any more over here. The Nazim Credit Light Infantry, I would, I would set up here and start focusing the Fusiliers of the line. Even move through uh, some of your uh, melee infantry and just set up over here. We do have a unit of Hussars still left from the Prussians and the uh, General's Bodyguard. But I don't know. This is looking pretty soft. The uh, Spanish Fusiliers over here again engaged now against the Semat Janissaries. We've also got the uh, Brave Regiment of France in there as well. Let's actually zoom on in and see how things are going. It's very foggy. A lot of gunfire going on on this mountaintop here. But yeah, you can see that the Janissaries are just carving a path through these Spanish lines. This was, I think, a, a fresh unit of Fusiliers, and they're down 60 men. The Samad Janissaries, still half of their unit remaining. Yeah, they are being carved up, and here we go. Finally, more mounted infantry coming through, or mounted uh, Nazim credit. They did charge in, but the Hussars were able to counter charge there. And it looks like this unit of Fusiliers is in square formation. But again, use this as a screening unit. Move up some more of your credit and infantry right into this gap. It's the perfect opportunity, but unfortunately it doesn't look like it is an opportunity he will seize. And still, still holding back over here. Hmm. Uh, 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 I don't like this. Baic Janissary, uh... They're not mercenaries. Uh, Bayek Janissary Musketeers could have cracked this by now, and then they, the uh, Spanish and Prussian alliance would definitely be in trouble because we'd have units that would be forcing their way up through this choke point as well. And look at this. Now, now it's too little too late to move through this little choke point because we have the foot guards that have reinforced this line. It is kind of their last line of defense, but even still... There was a chance there, but it just was not seized. I love the look of these Ottomans just moving ever so slowly up this hilltop, though. Very, very cool. And what do we have here? Uh, oh, the Coriace from France. What? How? Where did they come from? They are wrecking those Fusiliers, though. Yeah, they've charged up in behind. Uh, they're actually battling the Hussars, but I think the Coriace uh, are... Probably the better unit, especially supported by those uh, Samat Janissaries. Ooh, big volley there from those Musketeers, though, before the French do get into melee with them. Come on, boys. Hold! Hold, Prussians! Don't let them through! Oh, this is this is a perfect position, though. I would, I would zoom down even further if I could, but I can't because of the uh, terrain elevation. Well, look at the Ottomans here, just pummeling the Prussians. Half of their unit is engaged in melee, the other half is just being destroyed by the Ottoman infantry. Well done there, and there we go. They have cracked through that second line of defense, but now they have three units of fresh foot guards to deal with, and the Musketeers. And at this point, finally, the Ottomans are moving forwards. But again, it's a little bit too late for that. The, the, the French are already here, charging in with the Fusiliers of the line into the Jaegers. The Walden guards have been routed. I mean, the French the French could have used uh, used the distraction, I guess, a while ago. Uh, we've got a unit of Coriace moving in. Yeah, they've charged down the slopes into the Jaeger. That's a pretty effective charge. Uh, if anything, they're going to at least push it out of formation and then allow the uh, depleted Fusiliers of the line to uh, break this unit of Jaegers. And how are things going? Yeah, the, the Brave Regiment is definitely living up to their name as the Brave, taking on those foot guards. I would not want to be in the front lines there. Yeah, pull back. I, I would be like, okay, Ottomans, it's your turn. It's your, your guys' turn to actually, uh, 
actually be in the front lines for once. Uh, enough French have died, I think. Uh, we've got more six-pounder horse artillery moving forward. This would be good if he could set it up right at the hilltop. This isn't high enough. He needs to get it a little bit more than that. Yeah, he needs to get it right up here and then maybe just get some canister shot into the foot guards. That's a very good idea. But how are we looking over here? Okay, finally the Silitar Guard is moving in against the Landfair. And look at this, just immediately, immediately breaking. Well, not immediately breaking, but there we go. Look at that, two units just shattered immediately. I gotta stop saying immediately, because that's not exactly true. But as I said before, the Silitar Guard could have dealt with these two units with relative ease. And look at that, that's all that it took for this entire flank to shatter. We do have the Musketeers quickly with the drawing here. I think that is a good uh, idea from the Prussian player. Uh, he's overwhelmed over here. Uh, do we have anything in reserve? We do actually have the Spanish general coming down here. I don't know what he plans to do over here. I don't think he's going to be able to save the Prussian Musketeers. They do go into square formation just in time. So well done there, stopping this Selatar guard from destroying them. But with the French infantry so close at hand, I don't know how it's going to uh, go for these guys. I don't think they're going to make it back up to the hilltop with uh, the remainder of their force. And over here, so we've got we've got the 18-pounder foot artillery, which should be right here. Right here. Just, well, I guess you can't really see uh, the enemy. But I think that it would still get some casualties ripping through the tree line. And how are things going? Okay, yeah, it looks like he is going to try and move the six-pounder horse artillery a little bit closer. Good call there. Uh, but yeah, all of this Ottoman infantry is just holding back. I guess he's 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 saving it for later, uh, just in case they need it. I mean, it is still a pretty close battle because the Ottomans and the French are are quite depleted at this point, and the Prussians with those. Um, with those foot guards, they still stand, or they still pose quite a threat on the battlefield. Those three units are not shoveovers, and I'm pretty sure that the French young guard are, they're a little bit bloodied up at this point. In fact, where is the young guard? We've got the 18th Regiment, the Brave. They, they possibly are, have already broken from the battlefield, but what is this? We've got pretty much point-blank range here going on. Nazim Credit Infantry firing down there, but the Prussians have begun to fire as well. And look at this, we've got the the uh, six-pounder horse artillery right in front here. What is going on? Oh, he's, he's actually trying to limber back up and get them out of there. Yeah, good call there. Oh no, he's actually going to charge in, so the artillery crew is going to be annihilated after all of that work to get it into a good position. And it's just not going to happen. Looks like the French general has moved on in there as well, but the foot guards are muscling their way on through. And where are the Ottomans? Okay, they're starting to move forwards, but the musketeers have blocked the path here. Uh, these forces are a little bit divided. Yeah, the French are bringing back this final unit of Young Guard with 46 remaining in the regiment. We've got two units of cavalry over here that should charge up the slopes here. Uh, one would probably be able to hit the Fusiliers, and the second could go around and maybe go for uh, a kill on the two generals. That is a possibility. Whose general died? Oh, the French general! No! So the general staff has been killed by the foot guards. Let's actually zoom on in here and see this desperate struggle. Ah, uh, very unfortunate there. The foot guards just managing to kill the general staff. Now, mind you, that's not the end of the world because the French only have one or two units left on the battlefield anyways. We've got this unit of Chassé that returned from routing way over there. And then we've got this unit of Young Guard, and that's pretty much all that the uh, French have left. But the Ottomans have quite a bit. And surprisingly, they're actually withdrawing from the Nazim Credit Infantry here. Don't push on through. Oh, what do we got going on here? We've got the Spanish General with a solid downhill charge into this unit of Nazim Credit Infantry. Oh, where is the General? I don't exactly know. Come on, keep volleying at him, boys. Volley, volley, volley. Don't let him escape. 
Oh, it looks like he is going to escape. And over here, yes. So this is a very desperate holding, or desperate defense here with the Spanish holding uh, behind here with uh, the general. Oh, and apologies, I think I said that was the Spanish general. That was actually the Prussian general moving uh, down the slopes. And now we have another very bold charge here from the foot guards into the Nazi credit infantry. Oh no, actually they're just going to reassert their claim on that hilltop there. Yeah, Nazim Credit Infantry are going to try and withdraw, but... Mm, oh, good charge though from the French General Staff into the back of the foot guards. Ultimately, that probably won't account to anything though. There is the Prussian General as well, I believe, with that uh, white... I don't know if it's called a pommel on his, uh, on his head there. There he is. We do have the uh, French Young Guard there. Oh, and it looks like possibly the General moving on in there as well. No, most of the Foot Guards are going to deal with that. That's probably a good call. Good call there. Withdraw the Prussian General. You don't want to lose him at this stage in the fight. Okay, we do have the... Where is it set up? Let's take a look. Okay, it is set up facing this way. Is that a good position? Not really. And over here to, ah, the mounted credit infantry, or sorry, the mounted credit rifles have broken. The Silitar Guard was going to charge the Fusiliers, but he's going to just get them out of there. That's probably the best option. Just use the Bayeks. Uh, the Bayek uh, Janissary Musketeers, 3v1, they should be able to defeat this, no problem. But I'm getting a little nervous as to how much the Ottoman army is divided at this point. Uh, the Nazim Credit Light Infantry here, I, I don't know if they've used up all their ammunition. It's possible that they have, because they are charging in against the foot guards. There we go, and then we also have a very brave downhill charge here from the Prussians, looking to break the remainder of the Ottomans on the mountaintop. Uh, what is this unit here? The Azars. Yeah, that's a light infantry unit, or I don't I don't think they're gonna be able to hold against three units of foot guards or two units of foot guards and a musketeer. That's just not going to happen. And what do we got going down here? Yeah, we've got the general staff charging in against the light infantry here. Don't know if that was that's totally necessary. I think the foot guards have got it. Let's zoom in on the Prussian general. He is moving in. Oh, and it looks like the light infantry has killed the Prussian general. That is a disaster, especially since he didn't really need to do that. Oh, that's going to cause some morale issues for the Prussians for sure. But here we go. Yeah, the Fusilier is not going to be able to hold in the face of this many guns. And the Silitar Guard is not going to get there in time. Valiant effort, my friends. But it just isn't going to happen. Withdraw that, that Ottoman cavalry and just continue focusing on them with the Baic Janissaries. Well done from the Spanish player there. I think this is his last unit aside from his general's bodyguard. Uh, and his general's bodyguard is is over on this side, just mopping up the remainder of the Nazim credit infantry that was down the slope. But now it looks like, in a weird Uno reverse, we have the Ottomans finally getting the hilltop here. And now the Prussians, who have pursued the Ottomans down this hilltop that were retreating, now have to fight uphill against the Ottomans that have conquered the hilltop. So that's that's not very ideal. But man, I just wish he didn't throw in his his general like that. He probably would have been able to turn the tide of battle, but now I'm really not so sure. We've got the Bayek Janissaries, uh, 52. Man, the Fusiliers are holding. That is that is not very good. How are they holding in the face of uh, all these overwhelming numbers? This unit is basically 1v4, 1v5 over here. Just slaughtering the remains there. We've got uh, another unit there of Bayek Janissaries. Probably pushing on the flank. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, no. It looks like they are going to just try and get on in against the Bayek Janissaries. And him pulling through like this, I don't really like that. 
but now it looks like the Fusiliers are going to try and desperately charge this other unit. That was a mistake, I think, because now they are they are effectively surrounded. Uh, very unfortunate. The Solitar Guard is well there. They should be able to break that. And, okay, okay, so the Prussians have actually withdrawn from the hilltop completely, along with the General. We actually do have a unit of mounted Nazim Credit Rifles here. Uh, that could be of a bit of harassment. Uh, the Chasse over here are exhausted from having to run the entirety of the battlefield. But, yeah, he's, he's basically telling the Ottoman player that he's going to have to come down off the mountaintop. He does still have his ar does he have his artillery still? He must. He does, yeah, and and full health as well. So he could basically just sit back and and volley the Prussians. It looks like the Spanish are going to uh, hit the mounted credits, mounted credit rifles. There we go. Well done there. Well done there, General. He should be able to break this unit. It's not as dicey as uh, the, the Prussians charging into infantry. This unit is pretty weak in melee. Yeah, there we go. Well done, Spanish general. Securing the uh, rear of the Prussian lines there. But now we need the... Uh, the Ottomans to actually uh, descend from the hilltop and form up and uh, just create a battle line, basically, for the final stand. And now we have the Ottoman artillery in position, and you can see that the Prussians are trying to actually get out of range of that very heavy artillery, but I think eventually he is going to have to just face the music and move on forwards. The Ottomans have the artillery, so they are able to kind of just sit here all day long if they wanted to, and just fire on down against the Prussians, but actually it looks like he is going to move his units off the mountain top completely and we've also got uh, the chasse over here chasing down the foot guards that's not going to really do much to be honest oh and it, running, ooh, it looks like they got a good hit on the general but it didn't kill him oh my goodness that was a huge hit i don't know if you guys can see that there zooming in through the tree line but yeah, a lot of that Spanish general's bodyguard getting caught there. I think it was relatively full health as well. So it being down to eight men, that is not ideal. But that's almost forced the uh, Prussians to just decide not to retreat any longer and just form up for this final stand. The Bayek Janissaries are cutting down this depleted unit of foot guards. I mean, they're fighting two units. Uh, they've only got 37 left in their unit. Uh, we've got another unit of musketeers that is pushing against the Bayek Janissaries. But yeah, now that the uh, credit infantry is in a superior position and they were able to get the first couple of volleys off, the Prussians are quickly dropping. Uh, in the distance there, you can see that the Spanish general is breaking as well. And I think that just by the skin of their teeth, the Ottomans and the French are able to secure a victory. A very, very close victory at that. Just watch the last of the uh, Prussians getting annihilated here on the battlefield. Again, not having any artillery, they can't really afford to sit back like the Ottomans can. There we go, and I hear some more cavalry charging, possibly. Yeah, it looks like the Silitar Guard was going for an assassination on Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta, but he is just going to escape the battlefield with a few of his units still intact, and the remaining Prussians are not going to be so lucky. So, just like that, the Ottomans have been able to secure... Napoleon's Spanish front and that will mean dire news for the Prussians as many thousands of French troops will be available to attack the Prussians in the early spring. All this would not have been possible without the help of the Ottoman Empire though. 
Oh, that artillery is still firing down. That is disgusting. They have such heavy artillery as well. It's 18 pounder, I think. Yeah, absolutely insane. Come on, men, hold! I love the French chasse still on the battlefield as well. They're moving on in. Charging on into melee. And there we go. The Prussian foot guards have broken with the Selatar guard charging into their backs. And there we go. So here is the end result. So it looks like out of the two, the Ottomans were able to kill more. However, they actually deployed 400 more men than the French did. So I'd say relatively close uh, kill counter given the amount of deployed units. Uh, the gun squad here as Prussia deploying a much larger force than the Spanish. Uh, also getting 500 more kills. But I think just the Ottomans were a bit too numerous uh, for them to secure victory. Uh, it could, could have been less of a close battle, I think, if the Ottomans had pushed that flank that I was talking about a little bit quicker. Uh, however, I think him not doing that actually made it for a more entertaining battle. Uh, looking at the unit statistics here, uh, most kills. We got 206 with the Chasse. That's quite good. 157 Fusiliers of the line. And 186, 137 with the Young Guard. And that is it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one.